can horses eat grass? And these are little horses, aren't they? Yeah. Special loud type ponies. I mean, one of your classic vets actually, who from the age of seven wanted to be a vet. Who doesn't like that piece of grass? Dr. French said Doosan's never far from animals. But her role as an epidemiologist with the World Health Organization in Malau, capital Vientiane, is hardly the work of a classic vet. Is there any indication from the National Animal Health Centre of um, when those results would be available? Mm, they said around two weeks. Anyway, there's always a cute Discussion at the regular World Health Organization meeting is centred on an anthrax outbreak. My job is to say what's happening in the animals in relation to this disease. Uh, is it related to the production system? Who is at risk in terms of human health then? Um, and how can we minimise this risk to human health? Francette's specialty is zoonosis. That's disease transfer between animals and humans. She provides advice to local professionals and primary producers. We're off to see a backyard slaughter point or a small scale slaughter facility. The person who runs this has had some training in uh, risk reduction measures for themselves and we're going to see what he's put in place at his own facility to try and uh, protect himself and his family and make a cleaner product. Bye <laughs> So, so the concrete floor was put down um, when, uh, two years ago, one year ago? When, when did they do the concreting? How many poultry do you do every day? Three uh, uh, around, around uh, 300, more than 300 per day. With plans to increase production, the need to maintain health standards is vital and everyone wants to avoid an outbreak of H1N1, the sometimes fatal avian flu. He's made some remarkable changes. I did recommend if he's going to build a, an enclosed facility that it would be great to have some, some fly controls and fly screens so that you know, our finished product hasn't got uh, flies all over it. It's Francette's dream job, supporting the Lao government through the World Health Organization. Making a genuine difference to the lives of its people, with flow-on effects to the world. It looks pretty good for the moment. Countries such as Australia and America and the UK are at risk from diseases from other countries and there's a need to contribute to development of animal health systems and human health systems in those countries. You know, you have to talk to the market owner and say, it's not good enough. We try to work with you, we put in hand washing facilities, but you need to fix your toilet. You need to fix the water. The World Health Organization has been working closely with the markets to eliminate potential sources of disease. This, this, they would have either fish or meat here, and um, it's a vinyl top, it's got obvious uh, wraps in it. If it was bright new vinyl and it was able to be cleaned, then that would be fine. But this is old vinyl, it's deteriorated, it can't really be cleaned. Sanitation at point of sale is a big issue. This monitoring visit provides mixed results. Um, I'm really happy with how they're utilising um, what the project's uh, been providing for them. Uh, we can see that it's just so much easier to keep this clean than the vinyl tables or the wooden covered tables. So this one broken. What happened? And uh, this tab already so broke uh, around two months ago, and also Anna. Uh, like uh, the market authority already closed the water. Two months ago? Yes, because this one is broken, so they don't want... So they don't want to fix it? Uh, no. It seems there's a standoff between the vendors and market management about who should pay for water. So the tap has been disabled. And it's a key way for uh, disease transmission um, from... I mean, primarily, if we've got people going to the toilet and not washing their hands when they come back, then that's a key issue for oral fecal um, transmission. Uh, but here we've got cross-contamination from meat from outside areas and so on, and then it comes back to, again, 
how do you look after yourself in this environment, you make sure you cook your food really well. Despite the occasional frustrations during her first two and a half years in the country, Francette has witnessed many advances. Human health surveillance is much stronger in Laos at this moment than the animal surveillance system. There's been a lot of uh, advances in supporting, say, surveillance for poultry outbreaks, uh, avian influenza, but there's still many other animal diseases that, that do go unreported because uh, that capacity level is still building uh, at the lower levels within now. <laughs> So they've been sick for a couple of weeks now. And now, man, man, chip, ni day chak a chit lai. Yang te panya ta nun yu day to. Laksara kut kut na na. Mm. Tung pup long. Pun bo day. He said around three weeks already. The farmer has identified a small number of sick pigs in his herd and has taken the correct step of immediately quarantining them from the others. He's been affected recently by a disease outbreak of porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome, or PERS. It's also been called blue air in, in China. It's a new disease to this country. I think Laos over the last five years has improved its capacity remarkably, and, and this is in line with the international health requirements. The Dusan family is certainly thriving in Vientiane, in addition to her important role with the World Health Organization, Francette's life is becoming even busier. He is going to be joined by a little brother or sister very soon, <laughs> so we're all looking forward to that. We'd like to stay in, in Laos another couple of years at, at least, I'm enjoying the challenges of, of working here. We'd like to continue on some international experiences, but hoping also to be able to bring this knowledge back uh, to Australia at some stage as well.